Atrioventricular block. Functions of the atrioventricular node, AV node. 1. The AV node is the only normal electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. 2. Its main function is the modulation of atrial impulse transmission to the ventricles, thereby coordinating atrial and ventricular contractions, by limiting the number of impulses conducted from the atria to the ventricles, which is particularly important during fast atrial rates. 3. Fibers in the lower part of the AV node can exhibit automatic impulse formation, and the AV node may serve as a subsidiary pacemaker. AV Node Innervation The AV node region is richly innervated by cholinergic and adrenergic fibers. Sympathetic stimulation shortens the AV node conduction time and refractoriness, by activation of the long-lasting, L-type, calcium current. Vagal stimulation prolongs AV node conduction time and refractoriness, by activation of the inward rectifying potassium current, which results in hyperpolarization. AV node blood supply Blood supply to the AV node comes from the right coronary artery in most patients, and less commonly from the left circumflex coronary artery. The His bundle The His bundle continues from the distal part of the compact AV node. Its penetrating portion then perforates the central fibrous body and the membranous atrioventricular septum, to emerge as the non-branching portion. Within 1 to 2 cm, the non-branching portion divides into the right and left bundle branches. The proximal cells of the penetrating portion of the His bundle resemble those of the compact AV node, while the distal cells resemble the cells in the proximal bundle branches. Blood Supply of the His Bundle the his bundle gets a dual blood supply from branches of the left anterior descending and the posterior descending coronary arteries, which makes the conduction system at this site less vulnerable to ischemic damage, unless ischemia is extensive. His bundle innervation. There is rich sympathetic and vagal supply to the his bundle, but their stimulation does not affect its normal conduction, while they can affect abnormal conduction. Pathophysiology of atrioventricular block. Atrioventricular, AV, block can be defined as a delay or interruption in the transmission of an impulse from the atria to the ventricles, caused by an anatomical or functional impairment in the conduction system. AV block can be intermittent or permanent. Congenital complete AV block The incidence of congenital complete AV block is about 1 in 20,000 live births. It is thought to result from embryonic maldevelopment of the AV node or much less frequently the his porcunier system. Neonatal lupus is responsible for 60-90% to 90 of cases, caused by maternal antibodies targeting intracellular ribonucleoproteins, that cross the placenta to affect the fetal but not the maternal heart. 50% have concurrent congenital heart disease, especially congenitally corrected transposition of the great arteries, ventricular septal defects, endocardial cushion defects and Epstein's anomaly of the tricuspid valve. Acquired Conduction System Disease Fibrosis and sclerosis of the conduction system is the most common cause of acquired conduction system disease, accounting for about half of the cases of AV block. Etiology of Acquired AV Block 1. Lev's disease characterized by acceleration of the aging process by hypertension and arteriosclerosis of the blood vessels supplying the conduction system, with proximal bundle branch calcification or fibrosis. 2. Lenigra's disease, characterized by a sclerotic degenerative process in a younger population, and involves the more distal portions of bundle branches. 3. Aortic or less commonly mitral annular calcification can extend to the nearby conduction system and produce AV block. 4. Drug-induced AV block typically occurs in patients with pre-existing conduction abnormalities, and rarely with healthy conduction system. Digoxin and beta blockers act indirectly on the AV node through the autonomic nervous system. Calcium channel blockers and amiodarone act directly on the AV node. Type 1 and type 3 antiarrhythmic drugs can also affect conduction in the his porcunier system, resulting in infranodal block. 5. AV block occurs in about 20% of all patients with acute myocardial infarction. Mobitz type 2 avenue block is more common in Indiana anterior infarctions, and has got a worse prognosis and can progress to complete AV block.
Complete AV block with anterior infarction is associated with a higher risk of ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation. Other forms of AV block are more common in inferior infarctions. Wenkebach AV block with acute inferior infarction is usually transient, 48 to 72 hours, and asymptomatic, and rarely progresses to high grade or complete AV block. Transient AV block can occur during angina pectoris and Prince metals angina. Chronic ischemic heart disease can result in persistent AV block. 6. AV block can occur in association with collagen vascular diseases, such as scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, Reiter's syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus, ankylosing spondylitis, and polymyositis. 7. Infiltrative cardiomyopathy, such as amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and hemochromatosis, neuromuscular diseases, such as Becker muscular dystrophy, peroneal muscular dystrophy, Kern-Sayer syndrome, Erb's dystrophy, and myotonic muscular dystrophy, as well as tumors, can all be associated with AV block. 8. Infective endocarditis, especially of the aortic valve, and myocarditis due to viral, bacterial, and parasitic causes, including Lyme disease, rheumatic fever, Chagas disease, tuberculosis, measles, and mumps, may result in varying degrees of AV block. 9. Iatrogenic AV block may occur with cardiac surgery, caused by trauma and ischemic damage to the conduction system, for example, with aortic valve replacement, coronary artery bypass surgery, and repair of congenital heart disease such as endocardial cushion defects, ventricular septal defects and tricuspid valve abnormalities. 10. Iatrogenic AV block may also occur during cardiac catheterization or ablation procedures. 11. In long QT syndrome with a very long QT interval, prolonged ventricular refractoriness can cause functional block, for example 2 to 1 avenue block between the his bundle and the ventricular muscle. Conduction abnormalities of the his porcunier system, including PR prolongation and right or left BBB may also occur in some patients with long QT syndrome. 12. Vagally mediated AV block occurs in the AV node. It is associated with a narrow QRS complex, and may be associated with sinus node slowing. It is generally benign. It can occur in otherwise normal individuals, during cough, hiccups, swallowing or micturition. It may also occur with carotid sinus massage hypersensitive carotid sinus syndrome, neurocardiogenic syncope, and in athletes. Clinical presentation of AV block. Symptoms are generally caused by bradycardia and loss of AV synchrony. First degree AV block is usually asymptomatic, but marked prolongation of the PR, greater than 300 millisecond, can cause loss of AV synchrony, and atrial contraction against closed AV valves, with symptoms like pacemaker syndrome and can cause worsening of heart failure. More advanced AV block can cause exercise intolerance, dyspnea, angina, mental status changes, dizziness, near syncope and syncope. Congenital AV block can be apparent in utero or at birth, however, many individuals have few or no symptoms, and reach their teens or young adulthood before the diagnosis is made, due to the presence of reliable subsidiary pacemakers with adequate rates. Natural history of AV block Natural history depends on the underlying cardiac condition, site of the block, and the resulting rhythm disturbances. First degree AV block has an excellent prognosis. Type 1 second degree AV block is generally benign. In type 1, avenue block associated with bifascicular block the risk of progression to complete AV block is significantly increased, because of probable infranodal disease. Type 2 second degree AV block carries a high risk of progression to complete AV block. The prognosis of complete AV block is very poor without pacing, regardless of the extent of underlying heart disease, once appropriate pacing therapy has been established, however, the prognosis depends on underlying heart disease. For example, Complete AV block secondary to anterior infarction carries a poor prognosis because of the large area of damage while complete AV block secondary to idiopathic fibrosis in the absence of additional cardiac disease, carries a more benign prognosis. 
congenital AV block carries a more favorable prognosis than the acquired form, when not associated with underlying heart disease. Patients with concomitant structural heart disease, wide QRS complex, long QT syndrome, or complete AV block discovered at an early age, are more likely to develop symptoms early, and are at an increased risk for sudden death. Diagnostic Evaluation of AV Block Determining the site of AV block can be achieved non-invasively in most cases. Non-invasive Testing 1. ECG, QRS duration, PR interval, and ventricular rate on the surface ECG can provide important clues in localizing the level of block. 2. Carotid sinus massage increases vagal tone and worsens second-degree AV nodal block but may improve second-degree infranodal block, by slowing the sinus rate, and allowing the hisporconia system refractoriness to recover. 3. Exercise and atropine improve AV node conduction, due to vagal lysis and increased sympathetic drive, but worsen infranodal block, due to increased rate of impulses conducted to the hisporconia system. First-degree AV block can show shorter PR intervals. Type 1, second degree avenue block may improve showing higher AV conduction ratios, for example, 3 to 2 at rest becoming 6 to 5 during exercise. Electrophysiological testing can be of value in 1. Symptomatic patients in whom AV conduction abnormalities are suspected but cannot be documented. 2. Equivocal ECG findings. Thank you.